January 1989. This is the beginning of the year where I will be leaving California, going to, well, you're going to have to wait and find out where I go, uh, but I have just a little over six months left in California serving the United States Air Force, and then they decided to send me, some, well, I requested to be sent somewhere else. Uh, didn't quite request where they sent me, but again, we'll get to that. Uh, as far as books go, I think we have a good mix here. All sorts of different kinds of things. And we're going to start with Deadlines by John Skip and Craig Spector. What a great cover. And uh, on the back here, I think it calls this a novel. It is a, a, a cross between a novel and a short story collection. Uh, so this guy in his in an apartment he kills himself and then our main character this woman moves into that apartment and uh ends up being haunted by the guy that killed himself that's the novel part of the story uh but while she's there the, the guy that killed himself was a writer and she finds a bunch of stories that he's written and so, as you're reading the novel, when we get to parts where she's reading the short stories that she found, we read those stories, and they are short stories by John Skip and Craig Spector. So, we have this uh, short story collection kind of thing going on. We've got, uh, I don't think there's a copyright page that, oh, there is. Nope, that's something else. Um, I was looking to see if there was anything that told us where these stories were printed. Um, but anyway, it's instead of just putting out a short story collection, you know, hey, here's Skip Inspector's short stories, they surrounded it with this horror novel. Uh, as I was reading it, I recognized some of the stories, uh, one in particular from Twilight Zone magazine. Uh, there may be others that were from there that's... That's the one. There's one that stood out as I was reading. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I've read this story before. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it's John Skip and Craig Spector. So, of course, it's fantastic anyway. But um, I like what they did building this story around their short stories. Uh, so, that was pretty cool. Anyway, the next book I read in January of 1989 is a nonfiction book. A Distant Mirror, The Calamitous... 14th century by Barbara, excuse me, Barbara Tuckman. Uh, and I'm just going to read this little blurb, little thing that was on Amazon. Uh, so this book is a history of medieval Europe from the bubonic plague and the papal schism to the Hundred Years' War. Uh, and I actually read this because this is a book that the character Spencer in a Robert B. Parker book was reading. And it sounded interesting, so I looked it up, and I found it, and, and and read it. And it's a history book, and it Barbara Tuckman looks at this century <clears throat> from different levels, uh, the from royalty to serfs. We get the day to day lives of different strata of people, as well as the big events that were going on. It was pretty interesting. I liked it. Um, could be dry in some places, but not as dry as a lot of history books. But uh, I dug it. It was really cool. I like Barbara Tuckman. You could say she was my favorite historian. Uh, so next, we have Odkins by Dean R. Kuntz. This is an adult fairy tale. Um, illustrated. I didn't write down the illustrator. And I was looking at it on Amazon, and it says created by somebody. So apparently someone created this thing. Dean Koontz wrote this book. It was illustrated by somebody. But it's basically good toys versus bad toys kind of thing. Um, I'm sure it was fine. Next up, <clears throat> man, we're getting deep. Next up, I read Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. And... Uh, I made a little note here. So the main character is R Raskolnikov, and he's a nihilist, 
And he ends up killing this old woman who's a pawnbroker who he thinks is worthless. Um, and then he ends up confessing to the tri- crime, going to jail. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's Russian literature. It's Dostoevsky. But I enjoyed it. I, I've mentioned this before. I do prefer Dostoevsky to Tolstoy. Uh, and how could you not read? If you're going to read Russian literature, how could you not read Crime and Punishment? Next up, we have some more nonfiction, Jesus, the Son of Man, by Khalil Gibran. And this is uh, basically a retelling of the life of Jesus as if it were, it reads like a novel, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, I've, if you've watched this series, I've mentioned Khalil Gibran before. I enjoy his work, very uh, lyrical writer. And this was uh, this was a this was a good book. It was good stuff. Uh, next up, we've got a twofer, <clears throat> Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne, followed by The House at Pooh Corner by A. A. Milne. I reread these because I had recently read um, The Tao of Pooh. That's a few videos back, I think. And then I had read another A. A. Milne sort of an adult fantasy, if I remember correctly. So, I was always a, a Winnie the Pooh fan. I say I reread these. I'm, this might be the first time I ever actually read the books. You know, I watched the cartoons all the time, whenever they were on. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's Winnie the Pooh. It's its Piglet, it's Pooh Corner. If you know Winnie the Pooh, you know the stuff. Eeyore, all those guys. <clears throat> Tigger. So, yeah, two Winnie the Pooh books. This would f- this was followed by, excuse me, To the Vanishing Point by Alan Dean Foster. I have to look at my notes. Uh, so we have a family, the Soder- Sonderbergs, who are on vacation, uh, a traveling vacation. They pick up an otherworldly hitchhiker, is what it says on Amazon, and then they're on the road to hell, a weird time and space flux thing. Uh, I dig Alan Dean Foster. At least I did. Haven't read any of his stuff in ages. Uh, uh, Again, I assume this was fine at the very least. Uh, I I enjoyed his Spellsinger series and some other stuff he did. So, I'm sure this was up to his usual standards. Um, Now, we have the only comic book on this entire list from 1985 to present, one comic book or graphic novel, if you want to call it that. Uh, I read the collected edition. I never had the monthly issues. Uh, but I have down here Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. Uh, again, is this something I need to explain? Uh, it's a, you know, it's a breakdown of superhero comic books, uh, a, Reimagining isn't even quite the right word. Um, I I probably shouldn't assume that everybody... I've never even seen the movie. I've watched parts of it, and I can't stand it. Um, Basically, the Watchmen were a group of superheroes. Some stuff happens. Nixon keeps getting reelected. Superheroes are outlawed. One of the Watchmen is murdered, and all sorts of craziness ensues. There's lots of flashbacks, and there's... A kid reading a pirate comic book. And, of course, you know, Rorschach. Everybody knows Rorschach and Dr. Manhattan with his blue dong hanging out. Um, This is something I should probably reread because I was not impressed with it when I first read it. This is supposed to be one of the most important comic books ever written. And I thought it was fine. But I was a youngin. I was young back then. What did I know? Uh... I do know I'm not impressed with stuff that has come out since that tries to mirror this. Uh, Doomsday Clock that DC put out. Um, I, I thought it started strong, but it went off the rails. And the uh, I think Jeff Johns was the writer on that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mimicking, trying to mimic Alan Moore's style. That didn't work for me. There's currently a Rorschach. A uh, 12-issue miniseries coming out, and it's interesting. Again, it feels like the writer, I think it's 
think Tom King is writing this one. I think. Don't take my word for that. Um, but again, the, the writer's trying to mimic, it feels like, Alan Moore's style. I think I'm going to have to wait until I have all 12 issues and read it <clears throat> all at once because reading it, reading the issues monthly, I can't remember what happened in previous issues. It's it's, it's so dense. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting way off track here. Watchmen is what I read back in January of 1989. Um, and the, I, I, may have talked about this before. Uh, I do like that the characters in Watchmen were originally supposed to be uh, characters from Charlton Comics that DC bought. Uh, so they were originally supposed to be The Question, The Blue Beetle, uh, Peacemaker, Captain Adam, I want to say Phantom Lady. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Uh, but DC said, they told Alan Moore, no, we've got plans for those characters. We can't have you doing what you're going to do to these characters. So he made the equivalents. So Rorschach replaces the question. Um, Night Owl replaces Blue Beetle. Silk Spectre replaces Phantom Lady. The comedian replaces uh, Peacemaker. And... Um, Dr. Manhattan replaces uh, Captain Adam. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I do like that. And there's an issue of The Question where Vic Sage buys a copy of Watchmen and reads it and then dreams that he meets Rorschach, which was very meta and cool. But anyway, so Watchmen uh, by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. The only comic book that's on this entire list. And then finally, the last book I read in January of 1989 was Beyond Good and Evil by Nietzsche, or Nietzsche, or however I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. Um, <clears throat> so philosophy, the only thing I remember about this, it was incredibly difficult to get through, and while I was reading it, I kept thinking, well, I can see where Hitler got his ideas. Uh, especially, of course, when he talks about the Ubermensch. Um, so, but, you know, I was getting into philosophy, reading different things. And uh, you got to read some Nietzsche or Nietzsche or however you choose to say his name. So that's it. I think that's a pretty good mix of stuff. We've got some horror, some history, some philosophy, uh, Russian literature, a comic book kid stuff you don't get much more of a mix than that so that was january 1989 um enjoying my last few months in california uh all right that's i've rambled on enough about this stuff so if you have any comments questions or corrections please put them in the comments below comments are open for spoilers just post a spoiler warning uh we try to be polite here on my channel if you want to tell me why i'm wrong about Watchmen, why it's a masterpiece, feel free. I may eventually go back and, and reread it. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comics, games, and occasionally small animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H, 5757. That's all I've got, so until next time, read more books.